Hello, I'm Ron Clark. Um, we have a question again from Jeff, another very good question, uh, having to do with the soul marriage, specifically here, the uh, black mirror. Now, <clears throat> his question is such a good question, so well written that I want to actually read the entire thing to you. Um, <clears throat> okay, here goes. In that collection of essays entitled Equipoise, uh, on initiation in hermetic character transformation, almost all of the contributors focus on anger and impatience as the two black mirror qualities most worthy of overcoming. Certainly I would agree, but assuredly there are other traits demanding either elimination or development. Many societal and religious foundational texts, for example, Homer, the Bible, the Vedas, offer up treachery, violence, vengeance, and cruelty as meritorious qualities. Conversely, we are taught that meekness is a virtue, although it might simply be weakness with window dressing, as Nietzsche suggested. Aspirants might well disagree with the meritoriousness of these qualities. Does not our mirror work demand a little more of a solid foundation. When considering our qualities, are we on firm ground if we assert that our choice of qualities to modify is a matter of common sense, or social relativity, or good taste, or received opinion? As imbued as we are with our society's value, Meditation provides no guarantee that we shall clearly see. And, of course, we can balance out the elements, albeit with poorly chosen traits, so balance itself cannot be the sole goal. The question is, then, from a hermetic perspective, does there exist a specific set of qualities that we all, universally, regardless of space-time contingencies, or other individual differences should, that we all should aspire to overcome else inculcate when addressing our mirrors. This is a sacred quest, so really this does come down to a question of universal values. So, uh, there are several issues in there, but let me start out by saying the simple answer is no. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Barton laid out um, this task in the astral section of step one called the soul mirrors, the black mirror and the white mirror, the, the list of negative qualities or traits and the list of positive qualities or traits that exist in our personality as we perceive right now, okay? And he directs us to meditate, you know, uh, examine, uh, introspect for a week, perhaps two if needed, but preferably a week, and create a list, first of all, of our negative traits or character issues. <clears throat> This has to be your own evaluation of yourself, not society's evaluation, not your church's evaluation, or your religion, or any beliefs that you have. You don't want to superimpose any of that on your evaluation of yourself. This has to be totally your judgment in order for it to be at all valid. And in order for it to be something genuine that you can work with and transform. <clears throat> this is your value judgment of yourself. I can't stress that enough. Don't take anybody else's opinion, what anybody else has written about the character, anything like that. No list of character traits that you get to pick and choose from. It has to be your evaluation 
of your character, your negative character and your positive character. Again, this can't be any of society's opinions. Nobody else's opinion but your own. And granted, as Jeff points out, meditation is no um, guarantee of seeing clearly, but that's okay and it doesn't matter one iota here because this is your evaluation of yourself in this moment. It's the best you can do. That's all that's required here. Your best evaluation of yourself. Now, you don't want to use, you want to base it on things like anger. Anger is a million different things. And most often, anger is a symptom or a, a result of a negative character trait. Most often it's about fear. For fear and the inability to accept what is, these are things that cause anger and that's what you want to get to. The root of that angry expression, not the angry expression itself. Unless, of course, you're just always angry at everything, then, hey, you got to dig deeper. You got to dig deep. You can't use single word descriptions of negative character traits. Because that just doesn't cover it. It doesn't capture what's really happening. You want to be as precise in your list as possible. And just let it rip. Just list everything you can think of. Whether it's occurred just once in your life or occurs every day, you know, you want to focus on the things that occur frequently for now. But the list has to be your own creation of your negative character traits. And then when it comes to the white mirror, of your positive character traits. You have to be brutally honest in these evaluations to get to the true character, the true essence of who you are, not who anybody judges you to be. You have to just let go of all that right here and right now. It's not about anybody else's judgment of you whatsoever. There are no universal standards. It's your evaluation, your interpretation of who you are at the moment. Not who you want to be right now. That's not, doesn't play into it here. In step one, it's who you are are, not who you want to be or who you don't want to be. It's simply who you are, a very frank, honest evaluation and cataloging of who you are. Once you've established your lists, and like Barton said, one week, examine yourself all day, every day, you know, this part of your self-awareness, that's one of the mental exercises, a continuous moment-by-moment moment awareness of yourself in the world and who you are. This is where your list of negative and positive traits should come from. Your self-awareness and your self-analysis, placing yourself into the past. What have you done in the past that qualifies as either a positive or a negative character trait if you go in your lists, okay? So, one week, possibly two if you're kind of slow, <laughs> or you come across, you know, just this overwhelming number of character traits that you feel need to be listed in your list, then take the time to do it. But no more than two weeks. This needs to be brief, it needs to be raw, 
It needs to be uh, to the point, and it needs to be done rapidly in a week to two weeks. Because you want, you want to get this list out and down on paper. You don't want to uh, spend years making a list of your character traits. Because you want to create this list, and then the next step, you want to immediately start working with those character traits and transforming the character. But again, that's step two. Step one will take you a month, month and a half, maybe at the most, to get through. And it's important that it be rapid and quick like that because the real work is going to be transforming the character, not merely cataloging the character. This is just the preparation for the real juicy, meaty work. So once you've created your list, you will then <clears throat> divide this list into elements, okay? Now this is just the beginning of our understanding of the elements. You don't really know the elements at this point. You won't really know the elements until you begin working with the elements themselves. When you finally make contact with the elements, that's when you'll understand the elements. So at this point, this assigning the character traits to the elements is... You take your best guess, you know? Just do your best doesn't have to be perfect and it won't be perfect you know you have to accept that you have to just do your best and let it be at that because again this is beginning stages you'll have plenty of time to reassign them your character traits to the elements and it's not crucial right now this is just introducing you to the elements in the context of your personality, okay? So you make your list. Don't fret. You know, it, it doesn't matter if it's right or if it's wrong. What matters is if you, you've made that attempt to connect your personality traits, negative and positive, to the elements. Just that you've made the effort. Um, and it'll probably be a category of, I don't know. And that's okay. You know, I made four categories when I did this. Fire, air, water, earth, and I don't know. <laughs> and over time, I was able to, to put that I don't know list into the elemental category. But it doesn't matter. It's not going to matter one whit when it comes to working with the character traits. Transforming a character trait doesn't depend on what element you've assigned it to. This is really functionally irrelevant in the beginning. It matters later on as you come to balancing out the personality but that's not what you're doing right here. What you're doing right here in step one is making this list of traits. So you divide it into the elements, and then you divide each of those elemental lists into their importance, their frequency of occurring, their severity, um, their strength, and their relative weakness, okay? So negative and positive traits divided by their importance, their strength, because you're going to want to know this for the next step when it comes to working with your character traits. You have to decide, you know, am I going to do the major negative character trait and work on that first or a lesser character trait and work on that first? etc. But in step one, it, you just want to make a list. That's all you're doing is categorizing things. Then in step two, you begin transforming.
forming the character traits. Now, <clears throat> it's called the equipoise or the astral balance of the elements, but that's, that's really not quite the right phrase because what you're doing here is you're not, you know, bringing some up and bringing some down so that you have an equal number of negative character traits. No, that's not what you're doing. What you're doing is you're taking these negative character traits and you're positivizing them. You're not making one negative character trait milder so that you know it, it matches the other negative character traits. No, it's not that kind of balance. The balance is of the character. You are positivizing the negative character traits. You're turning them from negative um, habits into positive habits in the transformation work. So ultimately, the goal is to positivize and intentionalize what were formerly negative character traits. So they become transformed. You want to positivize the character, <clears throat> not negativize the character, not uh, regulate the negative in the character. You want to positivize the whole character. That's character transformation. And you use the already positive character traits to transform the negative character traits. There are, they are your allies in the process of transforming the negative character traits. You use your positive character traits to transform your negative character traits. And in the end, the equilibrium, the balance is you strengthen the weak positive character traits so that your character is universally positive in a balanced fashion. Okay? That's character transformation, which is step two. But for step one, <clears throat> There are, there is no universal list of positive character traits. Okay? That's you. You know, the whole point here is to become yourself, not somebody else's self. Okay? So... Fairly straightforward, simple answer, and uh, good luck. You know, it's it's exciting stuff to learn who you are. <laughs> to for the first time in your life, to get a picture of who you really are, and then change who you are. Transform who you are, at least your expression of who you are. Because that's where we go awry, is in how we have learned to express ourselves. We learned a lot of bad habits, mostly in our childhood, and we've carried those over into our adulthood. And now we get to look at those negative ways that we've learned to express ourselves and remedy that negativity, transform that negativity, make it into positive things, positive ways of expressing and being ourselves. And you know, there's a, a beautiful, positive expression of yourself hiding in there, 
and you know now you get to bring it out for the rest of us to enjoy okay so that's it for me today bye bye